Tyler Parker of The Ringer. Was that, what's going on with your in-studio podcast? Was that like a parody? Was that real? It, was it one time only? Like, what was that? No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a total bit. It's not real at all. Um, the, the whole, like, idea, I guess, behind it is that it's, they are social media breakouts for a pod that doesn't actually exist. And so it's like, it's, the idea is sort of, you know, so like, to me, the best version of a basketball podcast is a player podcast. Like the 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 best that, like I think I think a a current player is capable of doing the best version of a basketball podcast. They know the most and can be the most engaging, and can speak with the most authority and nuance. But I also think that the worst version of a basketball podcast sometimes is also some of these player pods. <laughs> because they are aimless and wandering and seem to be not even geared towards the whole episode, but just like, let's see if we can get one breakout. And so that's kind of the idea of the bit. Whereas like, what if this was just a really, really bad player podcast, like filled with, it's like a, a guy who is totally insufferable and like can't be helped and has like, no real talent to speak of, but is certain that he's got a lot to offer. You know what I mean? I, I know there was a bunch of confusion over that, right? Well, it, I mean, it, I was I was stoked about it because... Well, for, well, actually, you know what? For the listeners, like, tell them what it was exactly, right? Well, it, I mean, basically, like, it was... The, the, the idea is it's called the Parker Tiles Show with Thad Roper. And it's... Uh, yeah, we released like this like two minute trailer saying there was going to be a new pod on, you know, Spotify or whatever, a new ringer thing. And yeah, the trailer itself was just sort of a montage of uh, um, theoretically, you know, different clips from this podcast that, you know, exists or whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, we're I like, hopefully we're playing the bit you know, pretty close to the vest and not being too ham fisted about it. So people aren't sure initially if it's a joke mm -hmm. and whenever they hear um, me saying things like, you know, then it becomes, <laughs> they become very confused. Like, wait, this doesn't sound like how a player, what, 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 what is, what is going on here? Um, and uh, yeah, it was just, there's, I think we've got some things in there that are uh, incongruous with the uh, traditional um, uh, stuff that you hear on like a player podcast. And so, yeah, sometimes it takes people a second to catch up to the bit, but yeah, we're having, having fun doing it. We'll, we'll, we've got some more coming at some, we've, we've shot a couple more days worth of stuff and they'll just re get released slowly. All right, so I wanted to talk about Thunder basketball, obviously, with yes. you. And you know what? I don't know if you remember this because it's been a while already, already. We actually forecasted like so much of what could be happening with this OKC team. Back when we talked last time, we talked about the giddy SGA fit. We talked about Chet right. would be the guy to help them turn the corner. That was right. We talked right before that draft, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we said like well, – no, we also talked – um, that season after Chet was injured, right? Um, right after, after yeah, after after the flashes, he had had the summer league and right. and like gave people a taste, and then right, 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 right. Yeah. So I mean, what did you make of the season? What do you make of the SGA Giddy fit? How much did Chet mean to the team? How would you grade the season? I mean, season is aces, dude. Like it was, yeah. you know, like to they whatever the whatever they were projected to win, what forty five or something. They wind up winning fifty seven and getting the one seed in the West. I mean, I, I don't think there's you can call it anything but just like a pretty big success, especially with Shea getting a second consecutive first team All NBA and really like kind of elevating himself further. You know what I mean? Like like this is clearly a one A dude who's going to be able to be the top scorer on a title team. Like there's no more, no more wondering about that. Um, Chet, like, I, I mean, honestly, couldn't be happier. He, he, uh, the fit, the way that he and what he can do opened up things for everybody else 
gave Shea more space to play in, gave Jalen Williams more space to play in. Um, just the offense as a whole, he lets things breathe a little bit more um, because he is so often pulling these other bigs away from the goal. Um, right. And yeah, I mean, he just, um, on both ends, how he's affecting things as a rookie, I just, yeah, I just felt uh, felt super special. Speaking of scenarios, what's your favorite trade scenarios when it comes to this OKC team? I mean, the Hartenstein thing got everybody in New York in a frenzy. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? And who else should they be thinking about, not only in terms of specific players, but archetype of player? Yeah, I mean, Hard like Hardenstein, I'd be I'd be pumped about Hardenstein. He just just because like I think there's some fun passing stuff there. Um and he can get out and run, protect the rim, finish, bouncy, just like yeah, play physical, all the things that you would like out of a five. Right. If you are going to run Chet at the four, um, so it's it it uh, for the right price and it, and it, I mean it sounded like well, I guess when it got leaked or whatever they were talking about for a couple of years, which makes sense because they're going to have to pay some of these other younger dudes after that. So it makes sense that if they were going to try to go get him, it'd be a shorter deal. You know what I mean? Um, he was not like back last year, whenever they were, everybody was talking about like, Oh, are the Thunder going to make a move? Like at the deadline, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? The archetype that I, that, that, you know, me and some of the under other like Thunder riders were kind of feeling like they were going to go after was some sort of, you know, Kelly Olenek type of guy, mm. like a, a big that can handle and pass and shoot a little bit. And I guess that, that, the highest level of that would be Laurie marketing. That'd be, well, they, that would be great, but it's <laughs> also like, I don't, I think all that, I think Ainge is blowing a bunch of smoke and they're not getting rid of marketing. Like he's really good. And, he, yeah. and but clearly not so good that it's getting in the way of them getting good picks. You know what I mean? So it's like, right. right. It just doesn't make it, them getting rid of him doesn't make any sense to me. Right. So was, I was never like holding out hope for that, but someone, someone in that, um, in a similar vein, like Nas Reed, some, someone with that kind of ability was always, oh, yeah. I was mean, always, he, he's probably too good to move off of now too. <laughs> oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, There's, yeah. I mean, if Minnesota would, Minnesota would be crazy to, to get rid of. Them. Right, right, right. It, it, um, weirdly, like after the postseason, I'm not as like, hung up on you know i think i think they do need another big that can do some stuff just to give them some optionality in the playoffs for sure just to give them other ways to play and kind of not so chet just doesn't get bludgeoned every possession you know what i mean um but i also think chet is at his best when he's at the five and the thunder are at their best when he's at the five and it almost makes sense to me for them to try like they need another after watching the playoffs this year, like they need another creator. They need somebody else who can go get a shot, go get a bugger for themselves or somebody else. Like Jalen's going to be that, but he's not quite that yet. And Chet didn't get enough possessions this year to really let his ISO stuff kind of blossom in the ways that you need it to, to be ready to go whenever the playoffs start. Right. And so it's like, I think they need another big wing that can do some stuff off the bounce, shoot it a little bit, and then help on the boards. You know, like it, it feels like those are kind of the two things. Mm. So, you know, like I've heard people say like, uh, Mikhail Bridges, I mean, somebody else. I mean, that, Brooklyn, that, that's a little unrealistic in its own right, right? I don't think that will happen. I don't think that the Nets will try to get rid of him. I'm just, I'm just, talking about things that I've heard people throw out on pods. The one that the, like another, another Brooklyn dude who I don't care about or who I don't like, who I don't hear people caring about like that and like throwing in these trade things, but to me would be a great fit for the Thunder it would be someone like Cam Johnson. Oh yeah. Um, just because there's like, you can see him fitting into that offense very easily and he'll, and he can guard and hold up, you know? And so it, um, someone, someone kind of, in that neighborhood, I think. All right. What do you what do you, what do you think? Are you are, where where are you at with him? I mean, I think Hards. I've been high on Hardstein since I saw him with the Rockets in summer league. Like I always loved his game, so I think he'd be great for them. And then you know, yeah. Chet playing alongside of him, I think is a good mix. Talking about like 
the trades thrown out on pods. I've been hearing a lot of like Clay Thompson, Kevin Herter. You mentioned shooting. How do you feel about like those two guys? I mean, that'd be like, I don't think Clay's coming to Oklahoma City. Um, hmm. I don't think he would. I don't think they're going to want to pay him what he's going to want to be paid. You know what I mean? Like, I, like they got, they, they, well, they anybody, have, well, anybody in the NBA, that's the question, right? No, <laughs> no, but, but, but like, but I think somebody will pay him close, right? Like somebody, somebody will, I think somebody will throw him a bag, right? Like you, like the Kings will throw him something or the, or the Pistons or someone like that. that that's important. But I think, okay. You see, the magic. I think OKC falls in the category where Clay might think in his head, let me, I think I could win a championship with OKC. Like, I, I, and then I'm going to show it, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Like, you got this really great young player in SGA, Jalen Williams ascending. Maybe I could be the missing piece. I, I don't know if Clay's feeling that way, but I could see him thinking that, you know? If he, if, if he, if he was feeling like that, and if his mind was like that, and he was cool just coming in and, and like whatever shots he gets, he gets, you know what I mean? And then, like, yeah. Well, we also, another thing is we've, we've written people off that come back really strong after people thought they were done. That's another thing. Like we could we could see huge clay games in the future. You never know. No, I think it's totally possible. It's like, it's all about where, like where he's at in the hierarchy on the roster and what he's being asked to do. Like you feel the warriors sometimes asking him to do things that he kind of can't do anymore. You know what I mean? Like, like, and, or, or not on the level that he could. Right. And it, um, he will, he will like his shot diet will both like go down in number of attempts, but just in turn, like that guy would be so damn open on the, on this Thunder team. You think about the number of like <laughs> corner threes that they generate, this like stuff that they, whenever they, the, all the, all the, um, uh, live ball turnovers that they get and they get out in transition and stuff like that. Like they, they, I think percentage wise, they wound up being, I think by like 0.1%, the best three point shooting team in the league this season, it clay in Oklahoma city would eat. And, and I, I think as, as long as the legs are right, you know what I mean? Like if his bot, if his body's back to right, that's kind of the whole thing. I mean, there's, there's, there's not a lot of burst there anymore, but he wouldn't need it if he's basically the the fourth option on an Oklahoma City team, you know, and and he could stay out there with the second units and kind of um, run off screens and play some two man stuff with Jalen or Chet. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting. I, mean, I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't thought about him. In Oklahoma City, just because it sort of seems, I think I think every time I think about him and Oklahoma City in the same thought, I s almost go into a seizure and like break out in hives after Game Six in 2016. Um, but uh, but that's interesting. I don't think they bring in Herder, mm. like like for for what he'll for what he would cost. Because he just doesn't guard. You know what I mean? Like they like like they they don't doesn't want to play guys that don't guard really you know like he if 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 someone's just um just going straight matador out there they're not gonna get a ton of burn and i think especially so going forward now that like they're more invested in actually winning some games you know what i mean yeah maybe westbrook's and katie's best chance to win a titles with okc yeah dude i mean please believe there's been plenty of people talking about like that boy, that'd be crazy if that happened. I have no idea what. I don't think. I don't. I think like Russell do the like. The, the, he'll he'll Emmett Smith it and sign a one day contract. You know, right before he retires, so he can retire. You know, on the Thunder. I don't think they'll bring him back, like, to play any significant on court role. Just be. I think that's too, too explosive, and also just like we got enough dudes on the perimeter now that need the ball in their hands. Like it just, it, it wouldn't, I'm not sure the vibe would be right. And like that, that the relationship between Russ and the organization and Russ and the state is so special. I don't think they'd be trying to with that potentially for what would, I think 
ultimately only be like minimal returns. Like even if it wound up like, oh, this really worked, like, uh, you know, like you could, whatever Russ can give you now, you could probably get out of somebody else for a little bit cheaper and maybe a little and fewer headaches as much as I love Russ. Um, the Durant thing, I've mm -hmm. heard a bunch of people bring up and for sure he would fit perfectly. I have no idea how I feel about it, you know, to be honest with you. Like there's, there's part of me that's like, you know, uh, all parties have moved on. Let's stay moved on, you know? Mm. Um, and uh, like, we don't need to bring in someone that would, because, because he would, he would, he is still good enough, especially offensively that like you would have to change the way your offense operates a little bit, like the, the shot distribution would want, like dub would have to take a step back, you know, I think. Mm. And, and, you know, I mean, well, you know, J Jalen, as much as I think he could actually be a superstar at some point still, th th he wasn't ready yet. Right. For no, the, he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. I mean, that like, and, and that was, that was the, that, I mean, that's why I said that thing about kind of like after the playoffs, thinking we need another kind of big wing, just somebody else that can go get a shot. Because like I say, I do think Jalen will get there. I think yeah. like the, the, like all the seeds and checkpoints pretty much have, you know, been planted and met as far as he's concerned um, on both ends of the floor he just didn't he just doesn't quite have the like iso bag yet that he'll need to be able to function like that and i also think like he needs a little he he needs a little bit more space than shay needs right now to be able to like maneuver like shay's like shay can slink through you know these like cracks in the defense that it makes no sense that, that nobody should is, be able to fit through. That, that, that guy is so good, man. And it's interesting. It's like, like it's insane. It, it, and the thing is, is like he was strong in the playoffs too. So it's like when your team loses, you kind of forget about the individual effort, right? Like nobody's saying like SJ had a great playoffs because you know, they're not here anymore, but it was great. It was, it was up there. Dude. He, he like, he was blow for blow with Luca pretty much the whole mm -hmm. way. I mean, like Shea was probably the best player in that series, honestly. Like mm -hmm. you can make that argument. I well, what do you what do you think about the two way stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, so yeah. It, it, it um it uh the 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 problem with with you know that series is PJ Washington turns into fucking Glenn Rice, <laughs> and you know like. Derek Jones Jr. goes bananas and catches fire and 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 uh and yeah like it, it they got other dudes going you know what I mean and like and and the Thunder didn't shoot the ball as well as they've been shooting throughout the season like the Mavs the Mavs you know were were guarding and so it uh but it wasn't yeah it, it all had to say like I'm with you. It wasn't some situation where like Shay didn't show up. Like he was, he was, uh, I was, I wasn't expecting him to, to like not show up, but I was pleasantly surprised with how ready he was, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, obviously the Thunder have been great in drafts and this draft is interesting because it's almost like if you're a real draft guy, you'll say this draft isn't weak. But if, <laughs> right. but if you aren't really a draft guy, if you're like an NBA guy, you'd be like, this is a weak draft. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. I guess it just all depends on like your perspective, right? Yeah. I mean, it, dude, like, and I still haven't even like started really like doing a bunch of digging into these guys. Like I've still been, had my head in the, in the like sand of the NBA finals and stuff, but it, it definitely like you're spot on in your description of it. It does it, <laughs> like there. I, I'm sure as we get closer to the actual day, there will be people putting a positive spin on it. Like, 
hey, you could get a serious contributor in the 20s here. You know, they, there's 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 no difference between guys in the early second round and guys at 10 or whatever. Yo- you know, Yo- like, what? Jokic got drafted at a Taco Bell commercial. Sure. Yes. <laughs> And like it, I could see, I could see that happening, um, for sure. It to me the biggest kind of red flag is that hearing the all these people say that basically like the number one pick in this draft is the equivalent to like the eighth pick in some of these other good drafts. Sounds like a, that, that sounds like a Bill Simmons take, right? Is that the Bill Simmons take? I think that that probably was, or was it, <laughs> him or it was either him or Rosillo, probably. Okay. Okay. The, but it like, or it might have been Kyle, man. I can't okay, remember. one of them. The, they had a they had a meeting and they talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I sourced. <laughs> I, 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 put, I, put, I cited my source. <laughs> um, the, uh, but yeah, I, it's. I'm glad the fun. I'm glad that this isn't a year where. One, I'm glad this wasn't one of the prime Thunder tank years. You know what I mean? Where yeah. you're like, really counting on some monster to come available there for you some like chat you know what i mean like you're really hoping that someone is available there that can really you know uh affect some change in the franchise and yeah. yeah it doesn't feel like there's a ton of that but like i say i'm i'm half talking out of my ass here because i haven't started doing a bunch of digging yet but it, but in the in from what i've read and heard you're spot on Tyler, that's a great way to end the podcast. I'm spot on, you know. Uh, <laughs> Tyler, great stuff. You did a super fun conversation, as always. Maybe this time we won't wait uh, five years before we record. You know what I mean? But uh, yes, yes, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it sooner next time. Uh, where can we find you? Social media, written podcast, everywhere else. Um, uh, yeah, I'm on. I'm I'm on Twitter still for some reason. Uh, if you search Tyler Parker, it's the it's T Y L R P A R K R. Tyler mm-hmm. Parker without the E's. Cause there's a bunch of Tyler Parkers out there, man. You know, you gotta Dominate. get creative. You gotta get yeah. creative with the handles when you're as vanilla as me. <laughs> Tyler, great stuff. You're always welcome back on the show. Talk soon. Always great to see you, buddy.